Welcome everybody to our VNI Talks webinar. My name is Steve Tenuzo, your host. Today, I've got Renee Dada, and he is here to give us the basics of SEO. And for those of you who know anything about SEO, it's quite complex. It's a lot more than just you know putting some keywords into your website once it starts and then you're done, right? It's kind of a long game. And so uh, luckily, Renee is here to kind of take us through all the different aspects of SEO and to answer your questions. If you've got questions as we go along, put them right in the Q&A section so I can monitor them and they don't get lost in the chat. If you've got a story to tell or comment to make or whatever, keep the chat going uh, as always. All right. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Renee now, Q, and it is your chance to uh, tell everybody and teach us all about the basics of SEO. Awesome. Once again, guys, my name is Renee Dada. Um, I am one of the owners to a local company in Virginia uh, called Archer Marketing Group. Um, as Steve was saying, this is hands down one of the most beneficial and most complex at the same time marketing tools uh, that you can ever do. But with the complexity comes great return for a business, and this should be an essential key for your business. So uh, we're going to go into the beginner's guide of search engine optimization. Okay. Uh, a little bit about us. Uh, our company was founded in 2019 at the peak of COVID. Um, as you can see, uh, the redheaded guy on the left, my partner, Josh Ramey. Um, him and I have been friends for many years. And a uh, little history on us is when we left college, we went to the same college and called Radford University in Virginia, and there was just no jobs. And we kind of looked at each other, had the same major and said, why don't we try this out? I mean, we like, we love doing it and, and let's just kind of see where everything goes. Uh, to the right in the tuxedo is me, Renee Dada. Um, I uh, have been with Josh since November of 2019 when he founded the company in October of 2019. We are a full service marketing agency that specializes in web design, social media, and search engine marketing. But luckily, we're not going to get into much of the web design, even though it has to do with search engine. And we're not going to get into social media, but we're going to get into the most important, the cream of the crop, search engines. Um, what is search engine optimization? That is hands down probably one of the most asked questions. Oops. One of the most asked questions ever. Um, it is the process of improving your website's visibility. What does that mean? Have you give you guys an example for now. Have you guys ever looked up a plumber uh, and put plumbers near me? Uh, one of the first ones to pop up are the top three are the ones you probably always click on. Well, the statistic on that, and this isn't one of those made up statistics, is... Um, 75% of, of all clicks are found within the top three rankings. And you will be surprised what your industry is capable of and how many searches it's getting a day. Um, you, um, the importance of SEO is, well, a lot of things, but you get high visibility with web traffic. You increase credibility, which is key and better user experience. Uh, we're gonna brief up on all of those a little bit more, but um, with increased credibility, you're looking more at not the way you look because your photos are pixelized really good, but you're more looking on reviews and also making it simple for your users to do it. Um, you need to be able to explain your product to a fifth grader. And it needs to make sense to that one person. Why is that? Because maybe you have such a passion that you've taken the time to learn in depth about your, your business that it's much easier for you to comprehend it, but you need to make it much more user-friendly for anybody else who's trying to be a potential client within your business. Um, how does search engine works? work? Sorry, Crawling, indexing, and ranking. These are the three most important things. And that is what everyone's focused on. Primarily everyone's focused on rankings because they want those 75% of all clicks. But crawling, if I can explain it to, like I said in the previous slide, to a fifth grader, imagine the internet being a big 
library. Um, it's like a helper who goes around and reads all the books, making a list of what's inside of each one. When you search something online, search engines use that list to show you the best pages. SEO is like making sure a book has a clear title summary. So help, uh, so it helps you notice, helps you get noticed a little bit better. Um, essentially, imagine the new AI stuff that's going on. That's artificial intelligence that's really just surfing the internet for the answer that you want essentially think of crawling like ai just not that complex um and that kind of goes into our next topic which would be indexing have you guys ever looked in when you were in college or in high school or whatever and you were looking for the topic to study for that test and you look through the index the index will tell you where that topic is what page number and what it may be it's exactly the same thing except with keywords in Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever it may be. All of these search engines have an index that means something that leads you somewhere in order for you to make that rational decision on say, hey, this is the product that I want to um, target this month or these six months or whatever period you want to do it in. What are the top ranking keywords? So we take the highest ranking indexing words and then we write quality blogs on it uh, and ranking. Ranking takes crafting and indexing. It makes that your ultimate goal. That is the ultimate goal out of everything because without rank, without credibility, without some form of reasonable, uh, reasonable, incredible content, you're never going to do any of this stuff. Um, so finding a credible marketer who is willing to take the time to do stuff like this is huge. Um, keyword research, choosing the right keywords is, um, is one of the most crucial parts, uh, to, to any form of search engine. Um, for me, we'll use my industry as an example. If you're looking for marketing agencies, a local to the area because you want to create these content plannings and just be able to talk to somebody face to face, you'd probably look up best marketer in, I'll say where I'm from, Hampton Roads, Virginia, best marketer in Virginia, best marketer near me, whatever it may be. There are softwares that tell you what industries are going to serve you the best. Um, uh, what keywords are going to serve your industry the best? Sorry about that. And um, it's really not that deep. You don't have to write a MLA formatted blog. It doesn't have to be so complex, but you have to write good quality stuff around that. Um, and you can't overuse those keywords. That is something called black hat SEO, which is uh, illegal in Google's laws. And they can actually shut down a business uh, for that. And it's kind of scary. It, Kind of, uh, I've seen it happen to somebody before and their business basically got wiped off of the internet. Um, so doing it, that's why it's such a crucial key to keep doing things very credible and very um, unique and one and keeping it honest and credible at all times. On page SEO. So this is where a lot of people start losing, um, losing, uh, I wouldn't say interest, but kind of just draw a blank on SEO. There's on-page SEO, and then there's off-page SEO. We'll get into off-page, but uh, the most important things are title tags, meta descriptions, headings, content optimization. Title tags, these are book titles for web pages. They tell people and search engines what the page is about. So have you ever seen like the about page to a web a website that tells about the company or the landing page so if you go to the main heading page that first page that you land on is considered the landing page they appear at the top of your browser in the search results and they should be descriptive and inclusive of important keywords title tags are think of it as your hook statement what's going to bring that customer to catch their eye onto your website. Well, not only is it that, but a little bit on and off topic is between title tags and eye appeal. 
the website must look good and very appealing along with good title tags so Google can deem you as credible in their eyes. Uh, then you have meta descriptions. These are short summaries that appear to be under the title, the search engine results. They give brief idea and descriptions to encourage people to click on your link. So if you're looking for, hey, who won the Super Bowl last year? You say the Kansas City Chiefs is the meta tag. Then it'll tell you more about the game. And then maybe like a brief description. And sometimes it goes dot, 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 meaning there's more to read. That's all planned strategically through SEO and meta descriptions because you're answering that question, but you're bringing them and leading your clients or customers into going more on the page and looking more into depth. Um, and then you have your headings. Think of them as chapter titles in a book. They break up your content into sections to make it easier. Uh, and they also tell search engines what's the main topics on your, uh, on your page are. So when you're writing these blogs um, on your website, they're not just randomly scattered. There is a blog section to a website where all of these are being posted on. And I just did a medical spa. Um, and they basically have a blog on blackhead removal. Then they have a blog on IPL laser treatments. And then they have a blog on body contouring. You don't want to mix a whole bunch of things because if it confuses the search engine, it's definitely going to confuse your clients and customers. So having everything in an organized fashion in ABC order and just keeping all your, all your books in a row and having content to write about, you will, you will find great success in all of this. And then content optimization. This means that making your web content the best it can be, it involves using the right keywords naturally, making sure your content is well organized with headings and providing valuable information to your audiences the goal is to make your content helpful, easy to find on the web. And that is, I think, the most important thing anybody can ever say about anything is simplicity. You don't want to overthink SEO. And that's where it gets people a lot. Uh, if you, we know everybody wants a million dollars, but if anybody had that hack, we'd all be millionaires and happy and whatever it may be. Uh, nevertheless, having that simplicity will make it make that web traffic come. SEO is not an overnight thing like a paid advertisement would be. This is all organic. Um, essentially, it's just repetitiveness. As long as you keep on a schedule and you write the correct content, it takes about three to six months and realistically a year to see very measurable results on SEO. So, I would think of SEO not as advertising. I mean, it is, but more your website is your brick and mortar and your SEO is your mortgage payment to that brick and mortar. You're investing for that brick and mortar to make money. What's the point of a website just sitting on Google and you paid anywhere from a thousand to $10,000 for a website and it makes you no money. Um, key element. So off page SEO, what is off page SEO? It consists of backlinking social signals and online reputation. I also did not add your Google, my business page is a key to, um, key to, uh, off page SEO. What are backlinks? Backlinks are links or referrals from other websites to yours. Uh, so in BNI, um, you're passing referrals. Think of those as backlinking. Um, somebody is more likely in BNI to take your business based on a referral, just like this has to be thought of the same way. As long as that link is being shown by other credible backlinks, it shows your, it boosts your credibility to be a more credible, uh, uh, business online. Um, it's a signal of search engine that your content is valuable. Backlinks can help improve your website's credibility and search engine rankings. Social signals. 
Social signals can refer to the activity and engagement your website or content receives on social media platforms, likes, shares, comments, um, and media mentions. So here you go. Social media being one of the most used forms of advertising is still affecting your rankings. So what is backlinking on a social media page or social signals? They all really correlate. If you have a TikTok channel and you're posting, let's say, a product that you have, a lot of people are posting maybe little tiny toys or whatever. Let's just just use a toy car, for example. That toy car looks sweet. You think it'd be perfect for somebody. Well, that you're uh, you as the consumer are told in that video, in that 30 to 45 second video, the link is in the description in the bio. Meaning they have gone to your profile, clicked on a link, and then it boosts you as well on Google, Bing, whatever, Yahoo, whatever it may be. Um, it just shows the power of all this big moving wheel. And mind you, it's not a wheel that you have to reinvent. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You're, If you see a competitor of yours doing great work and you're maybe not as getting, look into what they're doing. It's not illegal. It's not wrong to do. They obviously have a good strategist who's helping them do something and you're looking to do the same thing and attract those clients as well. Um, and yeah, so just use referrals on that base with just looking at your competitors, see what they're doing and then mimic it. Don't mimic it to an exact. That's also black hatted. Um, so by the, the way, Renee, when we, when we talk about backlinks, um, I, I've got a friend who says, oh, you know, I put uh, my website on every post that I do on YouTube. And, you know, he thinks that he's got a million, you know, backlinks, but he's really just got one one uh, website, which is YouTube, mm -hmm. that is backlinking to his site, as opposed to trying to get links from different reputable sites out there to sure. increase the SEO. Sure. So those... You can find many uh, backlinks. They have softwares in which you purchase mm. the backlinks. Yeah. Um, a lot of marketing agencies, they don't cost very much to do, but that way you can distribute it besides the, like those just one that you're talking right. about because people typically have four social media handles, realistically three, but four is about the most. Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. That's not very many. You need like 25 to 30 a month. Right. Um. So a lot of these sites will list their sites in which you can post your business on. And typically for credibility stands, you want to be, you want that person's credibility to be an 80 or above, but realistically you want to shoot for 90% and above mm -hmm. credibility um, because you're going with Google's bare minimum. Well, try to strive for a little bit higher and make that average go up for you. Um, and also another one of the most well slept on portions of SEO is online reputation. That's very broad, but to make a long story short, your Google reviews. That hands down will tell the next person that, hey, this person is good. You don't eat at a restaurant that says it has cockroaches in the reviews and there's like 15 15 reviews that says there's cockroaches. No, you need somebody with at least four stars and above or at least a thousand some reviews or a hundred some reviews. Now, necessarily not a lot of businesses have a thousand plus reviews. It's much harder for people to do. Um, but a lot of people do something called table side marketing. Table side marketing, we won't get too much in it, but just a QR code that essentially links to a Google review and then you give them some kind of lost leader to urge them to leave those Google reviews. Um, I'll get into it a little bit solely for the fact so you guys may know how to do this at home. It's not very hard to do. If you go to your Google My Business profile, get the link for the reviews, go to a QR code generator and write it uh, copy and paste and it'll link to your Google reviews and then you put them at your checkout line or if you own a restaurant at each table or wherever the initiated purchase happens 
you send them those links so they can leave those Google reviews and you boost your credibility on there. Sometimes what works because people only like to mimic the bad things that happen and the people who enjoy their experience never end up writing a review. It happens all the time is give them some form of lost leader. So we did it with a restaurant, uh, probably I want to say a year ago, and it was a big success. We essentially collected their information from this QR code. They left a review. They showed the waiter that it was, uh, it was that they did leave a review and they got 50% off of a margarita. Well, that urges somebody to actually do it. Uh, nobody does anything for free anymore. You want to provide your services for free, even though it's something so stupid and so simple, people want something out of it. Um, and this is giving them the opportunity to do so. Um, we'll go on to the next one. Here is also more mimicking what goes on in your websites. Your website is the brains of SEO. You cannot drive your car without what? An engine. There's no possible way. Um, your site speed, meaning the server in which it is living in, has to be a good server. You don't want to do stuff on Wix. You don't want to do stuff on GoDaddy a lot of the time because depending on the plan that you purchased, they're shared servers. So you're sharing that same server with hundreds to thousands of other companies that are hosting it, slowing down your speeds. You have approximately three seconds for that website to load and or else your clients or whoever's your potential client is getting off that screen. Now there's a lot of stuff that vary in that, your Wi-Fi signal, your cellular service, whatever it may be. But nevertheless, you must 100% of the time uh, focus on your site speed and host it in a good server. Think of the brick and mortar now lives in a home. Make sure you're spending at least, I want to say the average cost for a good server is about two to $300 a year versus I think Wix is like 20 or 30 bucks a year, a hundred bucks. I don't know. It's, it's cheaper, but it's cheaper for a reason. Um, and then mobile friendliness. I know at least 80% of you purchase stuff more on your phone instead of hopping on a desktop, powering it up and then ordering it on there. You order everything on Amazon through your mobile app. You order, you call that client on Google, the plumber on your phone, because it's easy. You just click a number and then you pick up the phone and you call. Um, so all your websites must be formatted perfectly. You do not want overlay of text. It has to be specifically built for tablet, mobile, and desktop friendly. It's the 21st century. People don't necessarily I, I don't want to say they don't care about desktop, but primarily everything's done on this little device here. Um, and that's, that's really the grand scheme of it. Um, now, SEMA markup. Okay. I'm going to use this as an example. I had to write this down because I went way too overboard with my version of the explanation that even my partner said, come on, dude. And then, <laughs> He told me that. He said, you need to rewrite that. Okay. You might put a label on a toy car that says car and a teddy bear that says teddy bear. This way, you or someone else can look at those toys and they can quickly see what each one is without having to guess. On the internet, websites also have a lot of information like articles, recipes, or events. Schema markup is like adding special labels to this information so that search engines and other computers can understand what on the website is better. It helps the internet work more effectively and show you how the right information when you search, give you the right information so when you search for something, you can see it. Just as a label for toys, it's the same thing on the internet. Um, so like you were saying, like I was saying earlier, you have a thousand things that you want to talk about with your business. But if you narrow it down and separate it on the website, those are considered pages. A lot of people don't know what pages are with websites, but you have your home page, your about us page, your services page, and your blog page. We're just going to make it simple. Separating those 
just makes life a whole lot easier. I repeated that back then. Um, creating SEO friendly content. Use high quality content like we discussed earlier. Don't just write a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo just because you need to get a blog out for a month. Um, you would do better not writing some, well, kind of. You would better, you would be better off writing something shorter that's not going to be as effective versus writing some crap that's going to hurt you and your credibility. Finding relevant keywords. Whenever, the best way to find relevant keywords is strategizing. You don't go in to your quarter, Q1, on January 1, just saying, ah, we're going to learn by trial, by fire, and then Q2, we're going to take the mistakes and do it. No, you plan out, you make your goals. This is what you want to see. This is what your income revenue is monthly. And with this, let's say, $10,000, $5,000, $1,000 investment, whatever it may be, $500, you want to see about a 400% increase. You want to see about a 100% increase. You want to see 10 more thousand dollars a month at the end of everything. And you have to be reasonable in those things because there are good months and there are bad months. SEO is very effective long term. Um, there are other stuff you can do while you're waiting for that three to six months to bring in paid advertisement revenue, but this is organic. So organic takes time and then regular updates. You know how I was talking about in the last slide about a good server, not a shared server. There is a lot of servers that will automatically update plugins for you. Has anyone ever seen a plugin? I'm sure you have anything that, well, plugs in to make that site work. Each plugin does a separate thing. Um, I would recommend finding a server that just updates it. Like for example, our servers update every Sunday from noon to midnight. All I know is because my phone goes crazy. You just get like a thousand plugin updates, but making sure everything's up to date. It's no different than changing your car's oil every 5,000 miles. Um, It'll break down otherwise. Uh, so that's a very important thing. Updating your content. Maybe that content that you wrote three years ago isn't relevant anymore, so you have to adjust it. You don't have to create a new blog every single month. No one has that many products over the course of 50 years, 10 years, five years, whatever it may be. You're updating different content and making it as simple as possible. Um, useful tools. Google Analytics, that is free to the user. If you have a Google My Business page, you have Google Analytics. It is a good way to track your, um, uh, it is a good way to track your progress with the campaign and be able to think that, hey, this person's a good fit for me, or hey, I think I found somebody who's gonna be able to be a better suitable fit for me. Uh, keyword research tools. So there is a free one that if, anyone's ever looking to do it it's not fully accurate so don't believe everything that it says but it's not too far off from the truth but well, you got it for free so um it's called segrush s-e-g-r-u-s-h.com it's by a guy named neil patel neil patel is i mean he's a big shot marketer but um at this point he does more consulting than anything um for like those fortune 500 companies Nevertheless, uh, that'll kind of tell you where your Google rankings are, what keywords work best for your industry, what your domain authority score is, whatever it may be. Those are all good ways just to uh, look at progress. And then SEO plugins, uh, just plugins that go into your website that essentially monitor everything to um, make everything work properly and so that you're in the loop of whatever your marketers are doing for you. Uh, here are my key tips. Avoid keywords stuffing, like we were talking about Black Hat. Uh, don't just overload a bunch of the same keywords. You will get caught one day. Um, mobile optimization. If your website is not mobile optimized, then you are definitely way out of date. 
you must, must, must. This is like a top 10 commandment. This is like one of them for marketing. And then quality over quantity. Don't rush your brain to overthink something and completely forget about the quality aspect of it. Uh, you're giving valuable information in your website, so keep it that way. Don't just open a bunch of new pages because, well, it's just not worth it for you. Um, and then local SEO. So <laughs> I know we've talked about full SEO. I call it full SEO, and then I call this one local SEO. So on and off page SEO. Local SEO is pretty much like a Google ad. Um, if you ever look on Google, I, I like using plumbers because it's really easy, but plumbers near me, you'll see ads on the lower end of the link. And then above that, you'll see sponsored. Um, it is a paid form of SEO, but instead of pay per click ads, they are pay per call ads. So unless somebody picks up that phone, calls you, it won't charge you, but with those uh, services, sometimes they run a little bit higher in price per call because they are a more qualified quote unquote lead for you. They were actively searching for you and then they actively click the call button. So versus like a Google PPC ad is charging you maybe anywhere from 50 cents to $2 a click. This is probably charging you anywhere from $5 a call to if you have really high product costs, $60 a call. You don't know. They disclose that information with you. That is not your marketer who discloses that information for you. But nevertheless, um, it is definitely, definitely something you should uh, definitely look into, especially if you're just starting SEO and you have that three to six month gap to see those results that you're looking for. Um, measuring SEO success, organic traffic. It's pretty self-explanatory. So you're not paying for these people to walk onto your site. Um, you're looking for your conversion rates. So it's really hard to measure that stuff, but there are ways to install pixels into your website and then link them to your point of sale machine. And then that will kind of tell you where these people came from. The best way to do it is having like a capture, uh, capture page on your website that says name, phone number, email address, um, whatever it may be. How did you find us? And then that way you are able to separate it in an organized fashion. Um, but that should be pretty standard procedure. If you got any website just built, you should have a capture page on every page, by the way, not just one page. You want that point of sale to be acted upon anywhere they are on that website. Uh, and then keyword rankings. So uh, if you look up a keyword and it is um, ranking higher than maybe, well, you're looking up a keyword that is higher ranked, uh, you're probably gonna get more clicks because that's getting searched the most. That's how rankings rank, I guess you should say. Um, without uh, digital footprint, then you won't receive any credibility with the keyword ranking. So the more clicks is the one that you wanna go for. But nevertheless, those are the harder ones to rank in. So just keep that in mind. See what you're able to do. Always, always be patient with SEO. You have to be crazy to love SEO. I love it. So I guess I'm crazy. But it is very, very beneficial. And it just confuses a lot of people. Uh, common mistakes with SEO. Uh, ignoring mobile friendliness. Neglecting backlinks. Failing to check on websites' vitals, so your plugins, um, that's they could be very detrimental. Sometimes they're very easy fixes. Uh, ignoring content structure, so having those H1, H2, and H3 headers, so those meta descriptions, all those stuff I was talking about before. Um, having those perfectly formatted is big. And going with an agency that cannot meet your goals, and much, much more. Um I want to say this uh, is probably one of, forget about all the SEO thing, finding the agency that best suits you 
and relates to you the best, you're getting well, in bed with another business, essentially. And you guys have to think alike in order to build these structures well. Uh, if you're ever in sales, sales is all about trust. That's how BNI is structured is through trust. If I come visit a BNI chapter for the first day and nobody knows who I am, yeah, maybe one or two people might want to sit down with me and buy my product, but they don't trust me yet. I have to build that. So make sure you get correlated with the right agency that's going to treat you with fairness, that's going to follow all of your guidelines. And maybe every once in a while, hint at a few things that they think would suit you a little bit better. Um, and then future and SEO trends. So why am I saying this? Well, because SEO has come a long way in 10 years. Um, voice searching, artificial intelligence, which chat GPT is the most raved about thing and mobile, uh, mobile first indexing. So this just gives you time to just prep and be ready for a marketing agency to kind of propose this stuff to you and explain it to depth. Uh, I don't think I need to explain artificial in intelligence uh, very much. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's honestly kind of scary. And I'm in the generation that really loves that stuff, but it's scary. It told it to tell me a joke and it actually told me a pretty good joke. Um, and then conclusion, key takeaways. SEO is an essential key to success in your business. Uh, conscious learning is crucial. Uh, continuous learning is crucial, sorry. And start implementing what you've learned today. It is key. Whether it's going full head first on the blogs or just focused on getting your Google reviews up, whatever it may be, it's all something that Either you can do from home or you can hire a company to do it. Um, we are giving away with this a free website audit. So if you are questioning how your website is performing, um, definitely reach out to me at info at Ramey.marketing. I'll put that in the chat. Um, and we can sit down um, with Josh and, um, and I and we can kind of walk you through with detailed graphs and and colors and whatever that show you where maybe you're struggling in or maybe you need help in. Um, but I think we're going to go into the Q&A at this point. Um, okay. Does anybody have any further questions? All right, we've got a few questions in here, so let's take a look. Uh, Maggie's asking, is it worth developing reels uh, or using TikTok if your target audience are women between 40 and 60? Sorry, hold on. I'm trying to read that question. Where was that? First one. Can you repeat that one? Because I can't find yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, is it worth developing reels uh, or TikTok if your target audience are women between 40 and 60 years old? Yes, 100%, 120%. Uh, so people used to think that Reels and TikTok are just for Gen Z and whatever. Um, but let me tell you, people in now, are it's going all the way up to the 60s now. You're seeing a dramatic jump in the past year from middle age to older generation people, 120%. Um, my grandfather sends me TikTok and he's 83 years old. It's 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 very simple for users to use. So it's not such a big jump or leap for somebody to learn, uh, especially if they're from an older generation. It's uh, like all social media. It's like now Facebook has more older uh, people on it than younger because all the, the younger people are like, all right, all the older people on here, we're getting off here, we're going somewhere else, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's how things like TikTok get started. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, and, and it does evolve. I do see a lot of older people on here on there now than from what I used to. Shut up on the old 60 is the new 30. You got that right. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a couple of years away from that. So I'll, I'll agree with that. 
<laughs> okay, the next question. All right. What are some good B2B SEO strategies? Um, definitely. Um, well, it gets really complex when you say that. It's a very broad statement, mm -hmm. but I would definitely say uh I would definitely say working on content strategies to just revolve around business. It's just as close as I can get without knowing the business and understanding the business. Yeah. I think this is a good time to look at, you know, let's do uh, an audit to see what you've got on your website and then create a strategy around what you need to improve that's missing. Right. I mean, a lot of people, what they do revolving around SEO for B2B clients is they're creating an, un, I call it an undefeatable funnel, which is one of the hardest things to do. So your funnel starts with that link to your website. So you're boosting your rankings up um, and then leading into a capture page. The capture page takes their information and runs it down, um, runs it down to maybe your Excel sheet in which you can email market them from there or text message market them from there. Um, but all you can't really, it, each industry is different. So that's the best I have to answer that question for now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And um, all right, let's see. So someone's asking, can we get Renee's contact info? So this would be a good time to put that in the chat. Sure. Um, I will type that in right now. Right. And while we're doing that, I will look for the next question. The next question is... I'm in South Carolina right now, just west of Myrtle Beach. So it's like... Uh, so I don't have my desktop, so it's really hard to yeah. type on this laptop. <laughs> uh, uh, All right, so Patrick's got a pretty good question here, and that's, would you recommend an industry-specific SEO provider or a generalist? So yes, yes and no. Uh, depending on what your industry in, if you don't mind just slapping that into the comments, but if you are in real estate, for example, real estate during COVID released something called the Equal Housing Rights Act or something like that, uh, where it is very touchy on how you have to advertise it. So definitely look into niche specific people um, if it is a very complex thing to write about. Realtors are really hard to advertise for. So people really take the time to learn their SEO strategies. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would definitely look into a niche specific person dependent on what your industry is. Uh, yeah. So realtors, uh, home service based industries a lot of them go with niche specific uh, like we work a lot with home service based industries but um, we really open our eyes to a lot of other different companies but a lot of companies will tell you hey we can't do this we're not specialized in this mm -hmm. I'll tell you I have a little rule and when someone says to me not knowing what I do uh, we can guarantee that we're going to get you on the first page of Google um, I usually run the other way <laughs> because there's no way that you can guarantee something like that. I deleted it off the slide because I didn't want to push buttons. Mm -hmm. If a marketer does three things, run, run as fast as your little legs can run. Mm -hmm. Promise you at a certain amount of money. It's impossible. If I knew that hack, I wouldn't be here. I'd be doing it for myself. Uh, I'm just kidding. But, uh, Tell you that they can get you somewhere on Google, like he said, and essentially promise you the world. Yeah. Nobody can promise anything. Um, nobody can promise anything on uh, on when it comes to this stuff, because unfortunately, it is a it is a repetitive game. It's a tough game. Yeah. Tough game to play. If you're just starting out. What is the top three things if you're just starting out and have to use Wix for a year or two? Um, sorry, I mumbled that. I should probably repeat that better. What are the top three things you should do if you're just starting out and have to use Wix for a year or two? Um, grow your social media. 
I wouldn't dump a whole bunch of money into your Wix. Like limit that a little bit if you can and dump more on social media or, well, YouTube, but YouTube's Google as well. Mm -hmm. um, but just work on different handles. I mean, work on your Google reviews, work on your Google My Business page. Uh, those are all really, really, really good ways to grow your business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. And let's see. Who else do we have? Uh, oh, Patrick was mentioning that he's got a business brokerage. That was the, the previous oh. question. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, definitely would 100% go with somebody who's niche specific um, for your business. But also you can go with anyone. Uh, also, you can go with anyone who is... Um, how do I say it? Like good with just websites and making SEO compatible websites. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's, that's who I would go for at first. So go with somebody who can build you that website. That's going to be SEO compatible and then go for the niche specific form of advertisement that you're looking for. Okay. Renee, I'm seeing people saying that they can't get the QR code to work to schedule a free audit. Okay. So if you guys, Sorry, these, I'm talking about QR codes and how easy they are and it didn't work. Um, if you guys, I'm going to put in the chat my email, shoot me an email, um, and then we can set up a one-to-one. -one. I can send you my Calendly link mm -hmm. and then we can schedule from there on out. That sounds great. Okay, it uh, looks like we're out of questions in the Q&A. Um, unless anyone has a last minute question, um, but definitely get in touch with Renee if you um, have questions about this, if you or if you're looking for some help with your SEO. Um, of course, if you've got someone in your chapter, go to them first. But if you don't, Renee is here to help us out today, and that's uh, that's a great thing because SEO is such an important thing in getting traffic to your website. If business is slow for you it may be that you're just not getting enough people to find your website. And um, another thing is uh, if you guys would like to just ask questions and maybe you do have a marketing person, that's completely okay. Uh, just reach out and check in and maybe ask some questions that you don't want to ask somebody else. Uh, we're always willing to answer a few questions or any type of questions that you would like. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So next week, <clears throat> we've got uh, Tori Moreno. He's um, been here a couple of times before in the past, and he is talking about Google Analytics, um, which Renee mentioned briefly, uh, you know, as part of uh, one of the things you, you need for uh, a successful website. Uh, and he is going to kind of do pretty much what Renee did. It's kind of make it easy for you to understand what it is and how it works. And by the way, if anyone has an old version of Google Analytics and did not update it in June, you're probably going to run a report that says nothing because it's if you don't have the newest version, um, that's going to be a problem. So we'll help you with all of that next week. Renee, any final words before we sign off? No, uh, guys, happy, happy marketing yourself. Remember, cheers. And it takes patience. So just be patient and keep a positive mindset. You'll make it there one day uh, with, with good SEO and good marketing. But I wish you guys the best. Hopefully I... I set up a few one-to-ones with you guys and maybe we discuss it a little bit more, but nevertheless, it was a pleasure. Thank you to Steve. Steve was very awesome in this process. Um, and I look forward to maybe meeting some, meeting some of you guys. Thanks guys. Cheers. That sounds great. Give yourselves a CEO and we'll see you all next week. Take care. Take care. Everybody.